Hey Carter, how's it going? I'm good, Ray. How are you? I'm doing all right. I had a pretty interesting day, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I was working at my gun shop like normal, uh -huh. and I heard all these alarms going off. The, uh, the electronics store next door apparently had a break-in. Wow. Yeah, so I went over there with some guns and wanted to help out the dude, the owner, oh, and I started like shooting at the, 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 um, the criminals, shooting up the place, and right. he got kind of angry at me. Huh. Yeah, apparently bullet holes in TVs makes them not sell quite as good. Really? Yeah, but... Huh. Anyway, I tried to help out, and I just went back to my gun shop afterwards, and yeah. now I'm home for the day. But it was it was kind of strange. How, how was your day? <laughs> it's kind of a coincidence, actually. I went out to get my normal daily herbal regiment from the guy I usually get it to. The, the guy with the yeah. trunk pharmacy. Yeah, the trunk pharmacy. Yeah. And he had some extra supplies in there, and he had like a bunch of TVs in there for me to sell, and they were only 30 bucks each. Really? Yeah, so I got one. Look at I, it. That is awesome. Yeah, it's at least 30 inches. At least? Yeah. Oh, what a coincidence. I know. This was the only one without bullet holes in it, though. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder so, what happened. Yeah, so I'm just thinking what we could do with this. I'm playing the Xbox. We can watch I, sports games. I've got an idea. Yeah? Um, my sister graduated from Hillsdale College, yeah. and uh, Ted Cruz gave a, a speech there. Do you want to just sit down and watch it and see what he had to say? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, let me go get the beer. Mr. Gorbachev, the only thing we have to fear was a little cocker spaniel dog. Hey, Hi, thank you. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you so very much. I said you're welcome. Graduates, moms and dads, faculty, trustees, members of the Hillsdale community. And guys in underwear. I am grateful for that warm welcome and to Dr. Arn for that overly generous introduction. Uh, isn't he an atheist? No, that's it was Edward R. 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 Murrow, the, the internet guy. Who described oh, right. the ascension of Winston Churchill to the prime ministership in 1940. He used a lot of booze. Now the hour had come for him to mobilize the English language and send it into battle. Apparently words can hurt you. These are different times to be sure. But we are all justifiably proud of Dr. Arne's leadership, his good humor, his freezer of ice cream and his ability to send the English language into battle. Today is a day of celebration. It's a celebration of your hard work your commitment, time, energy, passion, and prayers that you have put in to graduate from Hillsdale. And it's a day of celebration for the sacrifice and dedication your family has put in to get you here. And all the goats they've slaughtered in your name. I am honored to join you today. But let me say I fully recognize that the most forgettable part of the entire day is going to be the politician they invited to be your commencement speaker. And when you were blacked out, you're not going to remember much then either. Today is a day when you're embracing and welcoming and celebrating with friends and family. But no worries. Kuna Matata. I'm in politics. I'm used to speaking when no one's listening. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> Indeed, a couple of years back, I was on an airplane and a voice came over the loudspeaker paging Tom Cruise. It was Xenu. And somewhat sheepishly, I came to the front of the plane and I said, I, I, I think you may be looking for me. You have never seen so many disappointed flight attendants. Your faces look surprisingly like yours do now. This morning, I had the opportunity to tour the wonderful campus here at Hillsdale. I was taken to the top of the tower. And swiftly kicked off. Where, curiously enough, I was encouraged to carve my name into the door. <laughs> Why would you be encouraged to vandalize? Is he condoning vandalism? And my favorite spot on campus was surely... The G-spot. ...the statue of Margaret Thatcher. Oh, that's a terrible place for a G-spot. I understand spot. that when that statue was unveiled, she sent a letter of praise that said, Why the hell would you do Hillsdale that? Hillsdale College symbolizes everything that is good and true in America. You uphold the principles and cherish the values which have made your country a beacon of hope. You get drunk every night. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. did good. I also understand that two of our, the men graduating today are the creators of that 
interesting game Dr. Arn referred to as Thatcher Ball. Yeah, they were rather large for a woman. This sounds like animal porn. I have no doubt what? that Margaret Thatcher would <laughs> chuckle okay. at the game's only rule, no murder allowed. At least torture's okay. But I'm not at all sure how she would react to the unusual way the score is tallied. This is Scruttles. Hmm? Yeah. Wow. There are commencements being held on campuses all over the country this spring. But this one here is different. Unfortunately. Hillsdale, it is known across the country, is in a class by itself. Those graduating from other colleges are being told today to go out and make something of themselves. And that's just terrible advice. But for the 287 men and women receiving their degrees here today. I'm sorry. The expectations are much, much higher. Ooh, I'm all for that. Because of the education you received here, you are uniquely prepared for glorious battle to provide the desperately needed principled leadership to your family, your church, your community, your country, your Warcraft Guild, and your fellow man. While other graduates have been exposed to college courses such as Lady Gaga and the Sociology of Fame. Uh, his source is probably Gamecock.com. And I feel quite confident Dr. Arn will not be teaching that in this fall. <laughs> Those losers at the University of South Carolina. You have been grounded in an understanding of our Constitution and the government and the fact that, that our founders delivered to us. Yeah, far better than any liberal college would you do. You understand that precious legacy and the need for speed to preserve it. And to vote Republican. This past year, the world lost Baroness Thatcher. And in her honor, I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing the miracle of freedom. Well, if it's an unalienable right, how in is it also a miracle? In the history of mankind, freedom has been the exception. Yeah, not really. For millennia, the human existence was nasty, <laughs> brutish, and short. <laughs> it sounds like he's projecting something. Oddly enough, <laughs> the same description some of my Senate colleagues have applied to me. Ew, uh, how would they know that? Governed by kings and queens, we were told that power starts at the top and flows down, Just that like our rights down emanate economics. from monarchs to be taken away at their whim. The British began a revolution in a meadow called Runnymede. Is there a meadow made out of Runnymede? As the Magna Carta wow. provided, That's awesome. to all free men of our kingdom, we have also granted for us and are our heirs forever. Hmm. All the liberties written out below to have and keep for them and their heirs. As long as they were rich, white That revolution that reached is. full flower in Philadelphia in 1787 in a constitution that began from two radical premises. First, that our rights come not from kings or queens or even presidents, but from God Almighty. Nope, try again. As the Declaration observes, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Is he plagiarizing? I've heard that this they before. are endowed <laughs> by their creator with certain unalienable rights and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Second, in the Constitution, the framers inverted the understanding of sovereignty. Power comes not from the monarch on down, but instead up from we the people. And up like balloons. And the Constitution in turn lends governing authority to those in office for just a brief time. As James Madison explained in Federalist 51, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. In framing a government which is to be administered by men over men, Ew, silly the great cakes. difficulty oh, lies come in on, this. Man. You must first long. enable the I government to. Okay. to control the governed, and in the next place, oblige it to control itself. In my short time in elected office, I can assure you there are no angels in Washington. But there are at the strip clubs. And that is why, as Thomas Jefferson put it, the Constitution serves as chains to bind the mischief of government. Uh, he was a kinky bastard. He had just when government slaves. is limited, <laughs> rights are protected, and rule of law is honored, freedom flourishes. All of you know this already. 
As Russell Kirk observed, Hillsdale does not subscribe to the notion that all books published before 1900 are obsolete. Against all odds, the college speaks up as it did during the 19th century for permanent things. And with those foundations, what has freedom wrought? Did you just say wrought? Simply put, the American free market system is the greatest engine for prosperity and opportunity that the world has ever seen. Oh, uh, sir, what about the goose freedom that laid the golden egg? Works. Ah, my favorite lobbying group. No other freedom nation works. on earth has allowed so many really millions right. to come um, with nothing. Yeah, that too. Okay. And achieve anything. In all the centuries before the American Revolution, the average human lived on between one dollar and three dollars a day. And that's why Caesar is with little on difference ones. between Europe or Asia or Africa or North or South America. Oh, that damn unified currency. From that point, the beginning of the American experiment, for the first time in human history, per capita income in a few countries began to grow rapidly, and none more so than in the United States. Over the last two centuries, U.S. growth rates have far outpaced average growth rates throughout the world, producing per capita incomes about six times greater than the world average and 50% higher than the incomes in Europe. Uh -huh. Put another way, the United States holds 4.5% of the world's population and produces a staggering 22% of, of the world's output. How do you know that? A fraction that How has remained stable yeah, good for two decades, despite growing competition from around the world. America's predominance isn't new. And by the 1830s, the late British economist Angus Madison observed, Wait, he's dead? American per capita income he's was sweet. already the highest in the world. Yeah, just like I am now. In the 1830s. This is a result of America's economic freedom, which enables entrepreneurs and small businesses to flourish. Today, the U.S. dollar is the international reserve currency. English is the world's standard language for commerce. And bigotry. The strength of the U.S. economy allows us to maintain the mightiest military in the world. Pff, why educate kids if we can just bomb them? A Pax Americana. And U.S. culture, film, TV, the internet is preeminent in the world. 80% of the movies seen in the world are made in the United States. For that, perhaps we owe an apology. Oh yeah, you know, sorry about that Star Wars, you know, I, I know it didn't make much money. A disproportionate you know. number of the world's great inventions in medicine, pharmaceuticals, electronics, the internet, automobiles, technology... Pet rocks. ...come from America, improving, expanding, and saving lives. America was where the telephone, the automobile, and the airplane were all invented. And the wearable doghouse. Americans were the first to walk on the moon. We invented Pong, space invaders, and the iPhone. And twerking. Wardrobe malfunctions. Console but most wars. Bread and m and Freedom produces mm, m &Ms. opportunity. And I'd like to encourage each of you to embrace what I call opportunity conservatism. Woo! Which is that every domestic policy that is conceptualized, that is articulated, should be viewed with a laser focus to how it impacts the most vulnerable among us. That we should view every policy through a Rawlsian lens. A ballsy lens? How does it impact the least off among us? How does it enable them to climb the economic ladder? <clears throat> the most fundamental difference, it seems to me, between left and right On the way the is that both points. look at the economic ladder. And those on the left seek to reach down and physically take people and move them up the economic ladder. Is that bad? And that is almost yeah. always oh, okay. driven by noble intentions. And yet it never, ever, ever works. Never? Ever, never? never? The only way anyone ever, has never? ever climbed the economic ladder is to pull himself or herself up one rung at a time. Unless we go like that. Oh, jeez. Man, I just pulled him up a little. Yeah, and I just knocked him down. As President Reagan observed, away from you. Yeah, how can we better. love our country and not love our countrymen? And loving them, reach out a hand when they fall, heal them when they're sick. Ah, so he is in support of government health opportunity to make them self-sufficient so they will be equal in fact and not just in theory. 
Historically, our nation has enjoyed remarkable economic mobility. Historically, but not today. About 60% of the households that were in the lowest income quintile in 1999 were in a higher quintile 10 years later. That's uh, always good 60%. to be higher. Simultaneously, almost 40% of the richest households fell to a lower quintile in 10 years. Hey, isn't uh, quintessence this like is a This is a nation where you can thought? rise or fall, climb the economic ladder, That's based deep. not on heredity, not on the blessings of aristocracy, but bla bla based on your talents, your passion, your perseverance, your willingness to fight for the American dream. Although it definitely helps if you have a head start. Economic freedom and the prosperity it generates reduces poverty like nothing Else. Uh, the Black Death reduced poverty too. Studies and people. over and over again find that countries with higher levels of economic freedom, like the United States, have poverty levels as measured by the United Nations, that bastion of conservatism, 75% lower than countries that are mostly unfree or repressed. Uh, citation I remember some time ago when former Senator Texas, uh, former Texas Senator Phil Graham Cracker. was participating in a Senate hearing on socialized medicine. And the witness there explained that government would best take care of us all. Senator Graham gently demurred and said, I care more about my family than anyone else does. And this wide-eyed witness said, oh, no, Senator. I care as much as, about your children as anyone. Senator Graham smiled and said, really? What are their names? Teddy, Honey, and Golden. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Thanks to America's mm -hmm. free market system, the average poor American has more living space than the typical non-poor person in Sweden, France, or the United Kingdom. You see, it's good to be poor. Yeah, well, Think we also have that. a lot more room in this country. In 1970, the year I was born, only 36% of the entire U.S. population enjoyed air conditioning. Why wouldn't they enjoy Today, air conditioning? Today, 80% of poor households in America have air conditioning. And 96% of poor parents stated that their children were never hungry at any time during the year because they could not afford food. But they went hungry now, anyway course, because there is still still need, need in America and throughout the world, and all of us should act to help our fellow man. But more and more government is not the answer. To say otherwise is to ignore the fact that all major European nations have higher levels of public spending than the United States does. Yeah, they have higher levels of public And debt. that all of them yeah, are probably. All right. Human are beings are not happiest when they're taken care know. of by the state. They're happiest when Areas they're under the yoke of dependency on government are among the least joyous parts of our society. The story of Julia. Who's Julia? Is not an attractive utopia. Yeah, well, Julia wasn't that attractive either. We all either. flourish instead when afforded opportunity, the ability to work and create and accomplish. Accomplish, grow, and just, just Economic the growth jokes. and opportunity. Okay is the answer that works. The three. prosperity and opportunity of the American free market system gives us better health care, higher levels of education, the means to better protect the environment. Really? No matter where well, you yeah, look in the world, the evidence is, is clear as a well, strategy to promote yeah. greater well-being. It is. Freedom oh. works. The advancement of economic freedom, empowering individuals to decide for themselves where to work, and how to spend or invest their resources outperforms government programs, centralized planning, or increasingly regulated markets. And that's why our military consists entirely and it is of And for that reason that so many millions have risked everything for a chance at the American dream. Fifty-five years ago, my father fled Cuba. He had been imprisoned and tortured as a teenager in Cuba. Today, my father's a pastor in Dallas. Go Cowboys! To this day, his front teeth are not his own because they were kicked out of his mouth when he was a teenager. His teeth are gone, I know, but they are not yours. When he landed in Austin, Texas in 1957, he was 18. He couldn't speak a word of English. Well, send him back to Mexico. He had $100 sewn oh, into his underwear. Same thing. Okay. I don't actually advise carrying money in your underwear. <laughs> Unless you're a stripper, sir. 
But he went and got a job washing dishes. He made 50 cents an hour. And he worked seven days a week and paid his way through the University of Texas. Wow, school was cheap back then. Yeah, well, you and get what you paid for. he graduated, he got a job, and he went on to start a small business and work towards the American dream. The church counts as a business. Now imagine if at that time the minimum wage had been $2 an hour instead of being able to work for 50 cents. He might never have had that opportunity to get that first job and work through school and work towards the American dream. That sounds kind of arbitrary. I cannot yeah, tell you how many times I've happened. said thank God some well-meaning liberal didn't come to him when he landed in Austin and put his arm around him and say, let me take care of you. Let me give you a job. Let oh, me make you wait. dependent on yeah. government. Yeah. Let me sap your self-respect. And by the way, don't bother learning English. Um, you're mischaracterizing me, man. Instead, my dad, like so many millions before him, came here seeking a better life. When I was a kid, my father used to say to me all the time, when we faced oppression in Cuba, I had a place to flee to. If we lose our freedom here, where do we go? Canada, or wherever Edward Snowden went. Now, my entire life, my dad has been my hero. He wore his underwear outdoors. But I'll tell you what I find most incredible about his story. How much it sounds like history? How commonplace it is. Every one of us here today has a story like that. We could come up here one at a time to this podium and everyone could tell the story of our parents or grandparents or our great, great, great grandparents. We are all the children of those who risked everything for liberty. Well, unless you're Native American. That's the most fundamental DNA of what it means to be an American, to value freedom and opportunity and above all else. Science confirms it. In 1976, Margaret Thatcher delivered her pivotal Britain Awake speech. She was her cock. Her what? She said uh, there are moments in our history oh, it's when we have Wait, to make okay. a fundamental choice. There are moments in our this history when we we'll have to make moment. a fundamental choice. A moment when our choice will determine the life or death of our kind of society and the future of our children. Let's ensure that our children will have cause to rejoice that we did not forsake their freedom. Better make that full coverage. If we don't fight to preserve our liberty, we will lose it. And each of you, as young people with a world-class... Or even better, American ...classical class. education, with a Hillsdale love of learning, is perfectly situated to lead the fight. To communicate one-on-one -on -one with your peers and neighbors and colleagues on Facebook, on Twitter, with internet videos, with creative communication... <laughs> don't worry, we are on to that. tell and retell the story of the miracle of freedom and the miracle of birth to so many Americans and so many young people in particular who've never had the opportunity to hear that story Yes, because Americans don't know media, their own story that they schools, all have and certainly not from Hollywood what they use stories like that all the time the 287 like, uh, like men American and women tale. graduating oh, today are mouse. perfectly situated yeah. to win that argument to tell that story Thatcher continued of course of course this place is a burden on us, but it is one that we must be willing to bear if we want our freedom to survive. Throughout history, we have carried the torch for freedom. You all have the lighters. At Hillsdale, you are all prepared to go forward carrying the torch for freedom so that together every one of us works to ensure with Geico that America remains a shining city on a hill, a beacon what? of hope <laughs> Wouldn't be and shining freedom and fire opportunity too? for the rest well, of the sure world. Would. Thank you <coughs> and God bless you. Oh, thank you. Oh. Okay, so let's go play us some Thatcher Ball. Are you know that game? Yeah, yeah. I think what we need is mm -hmm. an empty ketchup bottle. All right. Uh, let's see the gasoline or vodka. All right. Some big brass balls. Okay. And a blindfold. That sounds like fun. I'll let's do, do it. Stuff. All right, let's do it. Run this by me again. What are we doing? All right. So there's one rule. Okay. And it's, it's no murder. Gotcha. So why am I blindfolded? You're blindfolded because the object of the game here is for me to throw this big brass ball at uh -huh. you. And I try to knock over the ketchup bottle. Okay. If then I, why is it filled with gasoline then? Well, see, here, here's what happens. If I can knock over the, the bottle, yeah. I get two scrotals. Okay. If you can dodge my balls... For yeah. two minutes, you get five scrotals. 
Wow. Yes. Now getting back to your question, uh -huh. it's filled with gas because if I can't knock it over, right, then it will eventually explode, uh -huh. which will cause murder and I will become disqualified. Oh, I get it. You ready? Yeah, let's do this. All right. All right. 